Hi, this is Ron Darling with SNY TV. Um, you know me from covering the Mets, and uh, I hope you get a chance to listen to Mets Musings with Gary Mack. I had a great time. I hope you do, too. Mets Musings is an unofficial, independent podcast covering New York's National League Baseball team. It is not affiliated in any way with Major League Baseball or the New York Mets. This is Len and Jeff from Baseball and Barbecue. And the one place to go for New York Mets news, past week game reviews, upcoming series previews, interviews, analysis, opinion, and, and what's, what's going, going down, down on the farm. farm. It's, it's Mets Musings with Gary Mack. So keep the faith, stay optimistic, and let's go Mets. Mets Musings with Gary Mack. Now it's time for some New York Mets baseball talk. Here's Gary Mack bringing you the latest news and analysis from Mets Nation and the world of baseball on another edition of Mets Musings. And hello and welcome to another edition of Mets Musings, episode number 361. Hope everybody had a great week out there. You know, last week, the uh, it looked like the wheels were starting to come off the bus for the Mets a little bit. People were starting to get a little antsy out there. Didn't turn out to be the best weekend, and but they followed it up by coming home, taking two out of three with Philadelphia. They're about 500 in the division. Look, the whole division is about 500. They're tied for first. It's all bunched up. They're not in bad position to get past the first month of the season. And we are at April 25th. And to still um, to be right there after playing in your division is a big thing. No need to fret. Pitching may be starting to come around a little bit. Uh, DeGrom is supposed to come back. He could be back Friday. They have not named him as a starting pitcher yet on Friday. He's eligible to come back. He can he can come back Friday. They have not named him as a starting pitching, only because there's supposed to be some inclement weather, so that might uh, determine whether or not uh, he, st- he is named as the starter. They could push him back to Saturday or Sunday and, uh, you know, um, get uh, uh, move Syndergaard up or get Syndergaard. And if they get rained out, it doesn't matter. They could push him back. Syndergaard can go on Sunday or whatever, uh, or flop them that way because it is uh, the big giveaway on Saturday night, the Syndergaard bo- uh, bobblehead, Game of Thrones bobblehead, so they may want to have Syndergaard try to figure out if he, you know, if they can get him in for that game. But uh, DeGrom should be back. Hopefully he, uh, he will be back to his uh, DeGrom uh, as usual. Uh, Zach Wheeler has been awesome. Nothing you can say about Zach Wheeler. He has pitched fantastic the last couple outings. Uh, last outing, he was practically unhittable. What a masterful performance. Uh, he was the only one this year to throw a ball 100 miles an hour and hit a ball 100 miles an hour. He hit a home run. What a night he had. Just a fantastic uh, performance by Zach Wheeler the other night, Tuesday night. He had a big, big win, and uh, really, I think he surpassed Syndergaard on this team as far as starting pitches go. Um, Matt's had a great performance the other evening as well, Tuesday night. Uh, Wheeler must have been Monday night. Uh, or Matt's was, well, whatever. This week, I'm all confused. Uh, uh, Matt's pitched very well. And uh, forgot about his uh, bad outing, the last outing out against the Cardinals. He came back against the Phillies and dominated, really pitched well. Uh, so maybe Matt's is coming around. He's showing signs. Um, Syndergaard, he's got to pick it up a little bit. 
He got hit hard the last game. I give him a bye because they said he was sick. He was not feeling well. Pitch sick. Give him some credit for that. But, uh, you know, he's got to show something. He's got to show something. He hasn't um, hasn't really shown much this year so far. And uh, we know he's a better pitcher than that. So he's got to start to put it together. If you can get him to put it together, DeGrom gets back on track. Uh, Matt stays the way he's pitching. And Wheeler, whew. Um, Wheeler is going to be unbelievable, I think, this year. Big year for Wheeler. You got four starters there. Nobody can hit. Vargas? Vargas is horrible. He wasn't bad last night. Only gave up one run, four and two-thirds. Uh, and his last outing, he wasn't too bad. But four and two-thirds, we can't have that. You can't have that all the time. Then they go into the bullpen. Gazelman, who was terrific in St. Louis, got shelled. Uh, Lugo was good, but Gazelman got shelled again. And you, you just can't have the bullpen exposed like that every game or every fifth game when Vargas goes out there. They got to do something. And for all of those that were crying for Gio Gonzalez, He's not coming. He signed with the Brewers. So forget Gio Gonzalez. They may not go outside the system. They're going to see what they can figure out in the system first. Um, they'll keep their eyes and ears open for any trade. Or maybe uh, if Dallas Keuchel price drops. But even if his price drops, he's not going to be ready for a couple of weeks. Not going to be ready. He's got some time yet. I mean, he, you know, yeah, he's staying in shape, but the, the guys are not ready. And if they sign Kimbrell, the only reason they would sign Kimbrell, I would imagine, is so they could move Lugo into the starting rotation, which is all well and good. But then you're going to have Kimbrell and Diaz share the closing responsibilities. I don't think that would go over too big. And who knows how familiar it would feel because now, even if you got one to be a setup guy, now you're pushing familiar up to the seventh inning guy. So, I don't know how that's all going to work out. But the thing is, don't panic, Mets fans. Now, I am concerned about Ahmad Rosario. And I'm not sold on him as our shortstop. Luis Galorme came up when he was sick, uh, made some nice plays at short, and it's always been rumored that he had the better glove at shortstop. His problem is hitting. But if they could get enough hitting from everybody else, I I'd feel more comfortable with Galorme in at shortstop. And... I don't know what's happened to Rosario's arm. I don't know if he's hurt or what, but this is not the same guy. That arm, I mean, I was at games in Brooklyn or in Staten Island in particular where he made two beautiful backhand stops, made a running throw, and threw it into the third row, third, fourth row, and I was sitting in like the sixth row behind first base in Staten Island. And this arm now is it looks ragtag compared to that. He's bouncing balls to first, even on the run. Um, I can see it on the run, bouncing it, but I'm telling you, he had a much stronger arm a couple of years ago. Now, I don't know if he's hurt, whether he's hurt the arm. I don't know if he's trying to throw differently. I don't know what the deal is, but that arm does not look like the same arm I remember when he played in single A ball. Just saying, I, I you know, could be me. His arm could be just as powerful, but what I see on TV, that arm does not look as good as it once was.
just doesn't look as he was always sporadic. I will give you that. His his throws were always sporadic. In fact, I, I you know I was at a game in uh, again the same game Staten Island between him and uh, third baseman uh, Jose Urena. I think it was Jose Urena. Walsh had a great arm before he hurt got hurt. Um, man, we had our gloves on behind first base there because these guys were just just gunning everything and we're not that accurate. Um, but this I, I, I don't know. Uh it it's nice. Uh, it's nice to see Todd Frazier back because uh, J.D. Davis, he was hitting, but, boy, his throws to first base were uh, always gave me agita because, you know, you never knew it was going to get there. He was going to throw a wide high. A lot of wild throws from the left side of the infield. At least with Todd Frazier there, things have settled down a little bit at third base, but I am concerned about Rosario. And And don't forget, Jimenez can, you know, Andres Jimenez is supposed to be a better shortstop than Rosario. His problem again is hitting. So you got two guys that are clearly better better fielders. Um, will Jimenez hit enough? And I, I think between Jimenez and Galorme, Jimenez may be the better hitter. We'll have to see. But then we don't know about Galorme. He had a couple of good years where he hit, uh, and then he's been back and forth to the majors and shoved to the minors. It's tough to get going there. And he goes, plays two games here, and, and he got a hit one game, but it's tough to get into a rhythm. You have to play. You got to play for 10 days, 12 days in a row. You just can't get thrown in there, the rare guy gets thrown in there and starts hitting right away. So, but that's a question, that's a problem I have. Uh, Rosario is really a concern. Um, so, but, but, there are other, some, there are some good spots and Let's take a break here, and when we come back, we'll discuss some of the other good spots. It's going to be a short show this week. Hey, no guest. <laughs> no author this week. Uh, but I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that because we did get an email from somebody. But uh, I'll be back right after these messages. Hey, baseball fans and book fans as well. This is Frank Nappy, author of The Legend of Mickey Tussler series, inviting all of you to learn more about my protagonist, Mickey Tussler, an incredible pitching prodigy who has autism. Follow Mickey's journey as he captures the hearts of fans everywhere with his blazing fastball and indomitable spirit. Please visit Amazon or www.franknappy.com for more information. Hi, this is the world-famous Mr. Brewtown of BrewtownSports.Potomatic.com. You know, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+, Plus. Uh, Brewtown Sports. You can also listen to the show at Stitcher.com, TuneIn.com, and iTunes.com. And we've got the new one. It's called BrewtownRadio.Webley.com. But the one that I'm most proud of being on is BaseballPodcast.net. It is the home of great baseball talk shows. Check it out, my show and all kinds of other programs all about Major League Baseball. So check it out. That's BaseballPodcast.net, the home for great baseball talk shows. 516-619-6341. That is the comment voicemail hotline if you'd like to be a part of the show and uh, drop us a line leave us a comment or a voicemail question anything at all call that number 516-619-6341 or go to metsmusings.com and click on that widget in the middle of the screen and that's a speak pipe and you can leave a voicemail right through your com computer through your computer's microphone or if you prefer 
to do things the old-fashioned way, send us an email at metsmusings at gmail.com. The Facebook page is facebook.com slash groups slash metsmusings, and the Twitter handle is at metsmusings1. And uh, if you'd uh, like to help out the show, check out our Patreon page. Check out the campaign at patreon.com slash metsmusings. Hi, this is Ron Darling with SNY TV. Um, you know me from covering the Mets, and uh, I hope you get a chance to listen to Mets Musings with Gary Mack. I had a great time. I hope you do, too. And thank you, Ron, and I hope that uh, you are recovering and everything is fine with you. They said that uh, a couple of weeks ago or a week or so ago he had a procedure done. Uh, as you know, he's taking some time off from broadcasting because of uh, a mass was found on his chest. He had a procedure done, and he was resting comfortably. I haven't seen any further updates or heard any further updates since then. But, Ron, we, you know, I uh, want to thank you for being on the show. And get well soon. We miss you in the booth. Todd Zeal's doing a terrific job, but we miss Gary, Keith, and Ron uh, on our broadcast. So get well soon. Uh, Ron Darling. Okay, so w what are some good spots that we've seen? Well, you know, the hitting hasn't been bad. The offense has been pretty consistent. I, I know they didn't do anything last night, but you, you run into a hot pitcher or pitchers, and there's nothing you can do about it. And they've been doing pretty good, and I'm very encouraged, very encouraged by players going the other way with the ball and bunting. And Callaway, uh, hit and run, do it using the hit and run more, and the stalling bases, putting guys in motion. Those are the things that are going to win ball games. Because when the home runs dry up, that's how you're going to win. You're going to play small ball, and I am very encouraged that this organization has changed. And this new leadership is going in this direction. And I said this a while ago. I think that a lot of the problems that they had was probably the philosophy of Ant Alderson with the power. But it wasn't, I you know, okay, let's not blame Alderson completely because it was throughout, it's throughout the game of baseball. But we're starting to see guys now, uh, Jeff McNeil, doesn't like the strikeout. Even Alonzo doesn't like the strikeout. He's a big power hitter, but he hits the ball the other way, you know. And he's good with two strikes. You know, he's he's going to strike out. Everybody strikes out. But they're not happy to strike out. Or not content to strike out like a lot of players have become the last few years. I like that. That's old school ball. You put the bat on the ball. You put the ball in play. Something good can happen. Something bad can happen. But if you strike out, nothing happens. So I am encouraged by seeing this. I am encouraged by the hit and run. Having guys run. Putting pressure on the other team. The Mets didn't do that. They wait. And, and wait for that three-run homer or the home run and wouldn't cause things to happen or attempt to make things happen. It seems this year they are trying to do more of that, and that I like. Doesn't mean they're going to win the pennant, the division, anything. But it's a step in the right direction, and they have the players that can do it. That's not a knock on the 2015 team. That team was built for power, and that team came together at the right time with the right philosophy and the right players at that moment 
to play that power game, but this is not that moment. And the power game is beginning to be lessened. And you need players. See, the power pl power play is good, but it's not consistent. And it can run into stretches of slumps. If you have the players that can hit the occasional home run, but put the bat on the ball, you have a chance of A, breaking out of slumps quicker, and B, having something happen. And that's what is enthusiastic about this team. Now, is it a perfect team? No, no, there's still holes. I think they need perhaps an outfield that it can hit. Someone that they can move McNeil to third permanently. Raises contracts up the end of the year. I, they're not going to renew them. J.D. Davis has been a nice addition, but his play at third was not stellar. McNeil gives you good defense, hard-nosed defense. He, he's not going to be smooth. He's not going to be Cleet Boyer or... Uh, you know, Brooks Robinson that down there, but he's going to use his chest. He's going to block stuff. He's not going to let anything get by him. And the son of a gun can hit. And that's the main thing. And he can hit. He'll occasionally hit you a home run. I I would rather have 10 guys hit 20 home runs. Or, you know, 15 to 20 home runs on a team. Then have three guys hitting 35. Because the chances of multiple run scoring with those other guys is, is more. Uh, it can happen more than if you've got just three guys hitting a bunch of home runs. Because the chances are a lot of them going to be single shots and. Um, and I don't have any stats on it. I don't know. I'm just going by what I've seen over my years of watching baseball. So I'll take the spread it out and less home runs per guy and have one guy that hits 30 or something. But this team has got the potential to do that as well. Conforto can hit 30. He hit 29, I think, last year. Alonzo has got the potential to hit 30. He's only a rookie, though. So there's some power there. Um, you just got to get these other guys going. That's all. And the pitching. The pitching is going to be the key. Bullpen's still a little shaky. Starting pitching is starting to come around. But it's got to it's got to improve and improve fast. So, uh, that's my opinion on everything. Um, all right, let let's take another quick break, and we'll be back with the uh, email in just a moment. Looking for great Cardinals talk? Then check out Conversations with C Seventy. My name is Daniel Shopdaw, and I talk with some of the great bloggers on the internet today about their teams. It always goes back to the Cardinals. Find the latest episode on my website, www.cardinal70.com or at baseballpodcast.net. Baseball and BBQ, your place for interesting baseball talk, opinions, and history. Baseball and BBQ, your place for barbecue recipes, tips, and interviews from the world of barbecue. If you like baseball and if you like barbecue, then tune in to Baseball and BBQ. Find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and BaseballTalkRadio.com, along with Mets Musings and other great baseball podcasts. With all the Mets news, it is the news from around the world and around the corner. Here's Gary Mack. Okay, and we're back. And uh, I just wanted to uh, mention, got an email from a Thomas in uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. 
And uh, Thomas writes, what's up with all of the great show? What's up with all of the authors? Uh, we missed having the bloggers on from uh, other uh, cities that are coming in. Um, I hope you'll uh, do that again. Still love the show, uh, but keep that in mind. Uh, Thomas, you're right. Uh, I, here's the deal. There's a lot of books coming out about the 69 Mets and everything. And so... I'm an independent podcast, so it's difficult to get these big name guys on. So you have to get them on when they do something like a book. Because they are willing to come on and publicize it and uh, and they want to talk about it. So you have to get them on. So for me to get a Ron Darling on here, I have to have him when he writes a book. For me to have an Archievsky, same thing. Uh, and hopefully, you what what happens then is you try to build a relationship so you can go back to these guys at another time to talk about just the Mets, and uh, they'll come on. It doesn't always work, but I try. And uh, that's why there are been a, a ton of authors on. And, um, you know, that's the answer. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll have a couple more on. And probably uh, be on one on next week, I believe, and, and uh, another one uh, later on in the year. But that's, that's the answer to that. As far as the bloggers, yes, I have to uh, start making contact with the bloggers again and setting up the interviews with them as well and um i have just uh, i've been a little busy and haven't really uh, put my nose to the grindstone and i have to get back to it and i promise i will same thing with uh, as i said last week with down on the farm i haven't really paid attention to the minor leagues but um just been had a lot of stuff going on work on the house and whatnot and things like that so uh, things kind of got sidetracked, but uh, and and I was intent on reading these books. So when I had these authors in, I, I knew what I was talking about. So that's that's the main reason why you see a lot. You you've been listening to a lot of authors on the show, uh, but we'll get back. And I think that um, I have a feeling we're going to have a, a round table coming up in a short period of time. So. Uh, everybody enjoys the round tables with the uh, uh, the boys from Baseball and Barbecue and, and maybe Barry Newman or Greg Prince or whoever we, Brett Capel, whoever we can bring in uh, to compliment that crew. So uh, listen for that as well. And that's basically why uh, things happen the way they happen. You know, we try to get who we can get when we can get them, and I don't want to because they have. Uh, it, it's almost like a time sensitive thing because the book is out at a particular time, so they want to publicize it and they want you to uh, put the episode out so they can, li you know. So, so it's uh, it makes sense. And if I waited two months and put it out, then it wouldn't make as much sense, but. That's the reason we do that. All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up for this week's show. I uh, I want to thank you for listening. And uh, don't forget to subscribe on uh, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you watch or listen to the podcast. Hit the subscribe button. That helps me grow the show and expand to new listeners. And remember, after. Well, keep the faith, stay optimistic, and let's go Mets. And I'll talk to you the next time on another episode of Mets Musings. <laughs>